we have a series of pictures of pairs of vectors. And we're asked, uh, yeah, yeah, ask people to copy down uh, these pairs to sketch them. And for each pair, label one of them F and the other delta S. So, for example, uh, we could take this pair. I could label this one F, I could label this one delta S, or I could label this one F, a delta S, and this one F. Okay? Here I labeled this force F, and, or this vector F, and this vector delta S. Now, I then asked that everybody construct a rectangle for each pair of vectors representing the associated work done, assuming that the F is a force exerted on some object and delta S is a displacement vector. Now, how would we do that? Okay, now this is something we've seen before, but uh, nobody seemed to remember, so we did quite a bit of review here. Um, First of all, you got to know that uh, work, remember I used this delta W, is the dot product of F and delta S. Okay, so how do we represent the dot product of two vectors as a rectangle? Well, I'm going to illustrate it with these two vectors. I project one vector onto the other. So project at a right angle and I get a vector projection. And then I just multiply this by this. Okay, multiply this by this. Now how do I represent the product of this and this? I let, well, the area of a rectangle is equal to the product of its length and width. Now these are in the same direction. Okay, they're along the same line. The projection of one vector onto another is along the same line of the other. So I can sketch a rectangle whose one dimension is this and whose other dimension is this. Now I don't worry about the directions of these things because I'm not multiplying vectors, I'm multiplying magnitudes of these vectors. So this, even though it's got an arrow on it, it's not really uh, a vector. So what I want to do is actually I want to put two arrows on it to indicate now you use two arrows to represent a distance. Okay, so this double arrow here represents the distance from here to here, uh, or the magnitude of this vector, because one of these vectors does have a magnitude that's the distance, whichever one we label delta S is a displacement vector, magnitude is a distance, and then it has a direction. Uh, but the other's a force, and a force has a magnitude, certainly, but it isn't a distance. Okay, so by analogy with what we do if, let's say, uh, this vector is a displacement vector, then this vector projection, it's still a vector, but now we just look at its magnitude, which is a distance. Okay, well, we can do the analogous thing with this vector. We put two arrows on it, and now this doesn't represent a vector anymore, it just represents a magnitude. So now I have the magnitude of the projection of this vector here and the magnitude of this vector, the whole magnitude of the vector here, and now the area of the triangle represents the work. Now I say that before I even choose which one is F and which one is delta S. I know that that's going to be the result because this magnitude here is just the magnitude of this vector multiplied by the cosine of this angle here. 
which I can call theta. Okay, so this is one magnitude times the cosine of theta, the magnitude of this vector times the cosine of theta. And this is just the magnitude of this vector. Okay, well, if I call this vector here, uh, let's call this f, doesn't matter. Let's call this one delta s. Then what do we have? The magnitude of this is now f cosine theta. So the magnitude of this side is now f cosine theta. The magnitude of this is just delta s. Now notice I don't have a vector, you got an arrow over this, I don't have an arrow over this. These are just magnitudes. This is magnitude of f times cosine theta. This is delta s. Well, what is the dot product? f dot delta s is the magnitude of f times the magnitude of delta s times the cosine of theta. So what do I have here? I've got an area that's f times cosine theta width multiplied by delta s length and that just turns out to be equal to f delta s cosine theta. Now one caveat I don't need the absolute value sign in this case because this theta is less than 90 degrees. So I just do f delta s cosine theta. But in general, I have to say that what I'm calculating here is the magnitude of f delta s. In other words, this area is the magnitude of f delta s. It's not actually f delta s. It's magnitude of f times magnitude of delta s times the magnitude of cosine theta. In this case, theta is greater than 90 degrees, and the projection of this vector onto this one is in the direction opposite this vector. So that when I multiply, one of these will be a negative quantity, the other will be a positive quantity, I'm going to end up with a negative. Now, what I ask for is a representation of the area but also representation of whether the area uh, represents the dot product or the negative of the dot product. Okay. In this case, I'm going to put a positive because cosine theta is positive here. This angle is less than 90 degrees. Here theta is greater than 90 degrees. Cosine theta is negative. I put a negative here. And of course this rectangle uh, has a length that represents the length of this vector. And I'm going to go ahead and put the double arrow on it to indicate that we're just looking at a magnitude. And this is the length of this vector. Multiply those two lengths, put a negative on it because the projections in the direction opposite the vector projected upon, I get a negative. Now it doesn't matter which one I call f and which one I call delta s. Um, here the one that was projected I called f. Okay, over here I'm going to call the one that was projected my delta s. Now in a given situation you know which is which, but I just threw down two vectors here, said you pick. It doesn't matter how you picked it, you're going to get the same area. We'll see that in relation to this one. Um, in this case then, what I've got is instead of f cosine theta times delta s, uh, this magnitude here is delta s, didn't leave myself enough room, delta s cosine theta 
and this side here is F. What do we get when we multiply these together? Well, we get F times delta S times cosine theta. What do we get when we multiply these together? Well, we get F cosine theta times delta S, but that's just the same as F times delta S times cosine theta. Again, uh, we didn't need the absolute value sign here. If we want the area, the area is actually the absolute value of this times this, because this is negative and an area isn't a negative thing. Uh, the dot product is negative. The area is positive, but I put a minus here to indicate that the dot product is the negative of the area. Okay, so the area is positive, but the dot product is clearly negative. Okay, in this picture, uh, we did, uh, we chose F here and delta S here, and now I look at this to show that it doesn't matter which vector gets projected on the other, we get the same result. I'll do that in a separate video. This one's getting a little bit long.